Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com on Instagram, ERW underscore plans on Etsy, ERWplans.etsy.com and on Patreon, patreon.com slash ERWplans. Today, we're going to go over whether you should have a digital planner or a physical planner for your passion planner. First, we'll go over the features of the digital planner versus a physical fashion planner. When you're trying to decide between a physical passion planner and a digital passion planner, there's a few things to keep in mind. And I'd like to show you first the benefits for each type of planner. With your passion planner, uh, one of the big benefits for me is that it's a physical planner. I, I, I really like the tactileness of the planner. I like being able to draw with my markers and my uh, mild liners and things like that in my planner. I like being able to put in these uh, sticker kits, which as of right now, they're, I don't know of any shop that has full kits like this for your digital planner, though you could probably create one yourself. Um, I might create some stickers for the planner. I'm not sure yet. Um, though, of course, you can always do full-size stickers like this in your planner. Um, I, I, for me, it is really kind of just a calming thing to set up my planner for the week. So um, it's kind of like a moment of zen almost for me to set up my planner for the week. So for me, this becomes something very relaxing and it becomes something that you can keep as a keepsake. And I, I really love that I have this, that I can keep this. I have every passion planner I've ever used at this point um, as basically like a memory keeper. So that's one of the big reasons that I keep a physical passion planner. Um, I find it easier to flip through these tabs to get to the months and weeks that I, I need uh, when I need to, to future plan that sort of thing. Um, and of course, you know, I, I just, I really like the tactile nature of this planner. Also, as of right now, as far as I know, you can't get, other, like this is a happy planner sticker. Uh, you can't get happy planner stickers as far as I know for your uh, digital passion planner. Um, I also find the painting in it. Uh, if you guys have watched other videos I've done, um, I found that painting in it doesn't I, I love painting in the physical planner uh not so you're gonna have to make like a painted sticker in like photoshop or something to paint into your planner in good notes i can't talk to what it's like in uh your uh, android apps or whatever but it, it's gonna be a bit of a stickier situation in uh good notes as opposed to you can pretty much do it you want ink you want paint Whatever you want to do, you want to cut this up, you can cut this up. You want to put Dutch doors in, you cannot put a Dutch door in the regular planner or the digital planner. So th those are some of the features that I like in this. Um, I like having these back pages. I like being able to flip through and just see things at a glance. Um, I find it much easier to plan like with my level 10 life goals when I can just tab over, see it, and just keep tabbing back and forth like that or tab between my roadmap in here. So that's why I'm sticking with the paper planner right now. However, there are some really cool features on the digital planner. With the digital planner, there are a few things to get to know about the planner before you decide to make the jump in. First of all, while you can use it on your Mac or on an Android device, it really works best on a Mac, on the uh, iPad in GoodNotes. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. As you can see, I've already stickered over one of the opening pages, which I have a video coming up next week that'll show you exactly how to add a sticker to your digital planner like that. But essentially, that's going to be what it looks like in the front. You have your weekly layout. The tabs are on the side of the planner, as you can see there. 
And if you just scroll, you can scroll backwards, you can scroll forwards, just like you're flipping pages in a regular book. The difference is that you also have little shortcuts on all of those pages so that you don't have to look at the welcome page every day if you don't want to, or if you don't want to sticker over it like I did. You have your roadmap in the front, just like you do on the regular planner. As you can see there at the top there, you have the start, which is your beginning of the year, and the shortcut to the mid-year planner, um, passion planner roadmap. So all you have to do is click on it and it'll take you right to the mid-year planner. Click back, it'll take you to the start by clicking at the top there. You can also, of course, scroll through it. Uh, one thing to note with the GoodNotes version is that if you are in highlight mode, pen mode, or any other mode, you're not going to be able to use the tabs. You, ha you can write just like normal. I'm using an Apple Pencil for this. But as long as you're in pen mode or any other markup mode, you're not going to be able to use those tabs. Side, you need to go into a different mode to do that. As you can see, it's real easy to erase if you make any kind of mistakes while you're writing. And it's easy to just flip to the next page. As you can see, it, the tabs go month to month, so that would be the beginning of January, beginning of February, etc. And then at the top, you have the weeks of the month, so that if you click on those, it'll just take you through to whatever week of that month there is. They gave every month six weeks. I'm not sure why, but it does give you a lot of flexibility to number your months, your weeks, however you want. You can also, as I showed before, flip through. That takes you to your month, and your month layout is exactly the same as the weeks. You just click at the top there, and it'll take you to the month that you need. Again, scrolling through will scroll through. It's laid out just like a planner if you're just going to scroll right to flip to the next page. Or if, and that works out way better if you don't want to have to keep clicking out of your pen tool in order to use the tab and then click back into your markup tool. Um, I've already added a sticker so that you can kind of see what it looks like when there's a sticker involved there. But this is also what the blank ones look like here. You also have blank pages in the back. You have blank, you have dot grid, and you have regular grid. There is one of each page in the back. However, you can easily add more pages to the back of your planner, an infinite number of additional back pages in that back of your planner. So that way, if you want to have like 50 back pages, you can do that. All you have to do is go in there just make it from the current template and voila, you now have an additional back page and you can add as many back pages as you want. By using the copy paste feature, you can also rearrange the back pages. So if you want a blank page and then a dot grid and another blank page, you can absolutely do that. Your tabs at the bottom won't work to get you to the dot grid page, but that's okay. There's also a monthly reflection section that is tabbed at the bottom and laid out just like it is in the other sections. So that, you know, click across the top for January, February, etc. Just like any of the other pages, you can't, there's also an end of the year uh, review, just like there is in the regular planner. And just like in the regular planner, you can always purchase a digital download version to uh, copy paste over that if you want to use, for example, uh, my back page or an end of the year review page, full page stickers. It would be the exact same method. This is the Ready, Set, Grow sticker book that comes with the Passion Planner bundles. It's laid out just like the regular sticker book would be. In order to use the stickers, you're going to select the selection tool at the top or the lasso tool if you're used to Adobe. Circle the sticker you want. You don't have to be perfect. It'll grab the sections just fine. It, it kind of is able to outline those uh, individual stickers. Then you go to the page where you want to add it and you just go ahead and hit paste and there's your sticker. You can make it bigger you can make it smaller depending on what section you want to fit it in. Uh, right here, I've got it on my timeline. It fits just fine, but you can also do post paste it wherever you want to paste it. 
and then you can make it bigger, make it smaller, do whatever you need to. You can also paste it on the blank pages in the back as a sticker book so that you can have a collection of stickers in your back pages and then just grab those stickers as you need them rather than having a separate file open for the sticker books. And then just pull it into the week you want, make it bigger, make it smaller, twist it about, however you need, want to use that sticker. One of the nice things about the planner is that you can put in as many years as you want into that planner. So next January, you can just do the same copy paste as we did for the back pages to add a new January section. The tabs at the top won't work, but you'll be able to scroll through it. So it'll just be continuous at the end of your blank pages from 2021. You'll have the January for 2022. Again, the tabs won't work, but you can just keep scrolling through. So you. The one of the big benefits of the digital planner is in theory, you can just use this planner and make it a multi-year planner. You also have the ability to save this file that you're using as a new file and then reload the blank file that you purchased the next year. So in theory, this could be the last planner that you ever purchased. The one tricky thing is with the deco stickers, like you'll see here, the lasso tool is going to grab whatever sticker it happens to touch. So for example, if I'm trying to grab this sticker, you'll see I grabbed a little bit of the pink sticker below it. So when I go to copy it, what's going to happen is it's going to paste both the stickers that the lasso tool touched. Essentially, you have to be really, really specific, even just one pixel of that sticker is touched and it will paste in both stickers. So it's kind of a, a steep learning curve to just grab the stickers you want in a book like the Passion Planner books that are just so chock full of stickers that they basically constantly touch each other. One of the other things that I not a big fan of digital planners is that it's hard to do fancy calligraphy. You have a ton of different brushes and pens that you can choose from. You can erase your mistakes. And it's, of course, much more sustainable. But I find that there's an even steeper learning curve to using the uh, brush tools. The benefits to using the digital planner over the physical planner is that this is a iPad mini. Um, it is really tiny. It's really thin. And I have my entire planner on here. I can sticker it as much as I want. I can um, I can sticker it as much as I want. I can um, add as many pages as I want to. I can do pretty much whatever I need to do with this that I can do with a regular planner. And unlike a regular planner, this never gets bulky. This never gets chunky. This fits in my purse. Um, my This is about the size of the small passion planner. So it goes anywhere the small passion planner would go. Uh, the medium, this is the medium for that I set up for 2021. And as you can see already, it's, it's so chunky. The lid, or the lid, the cover, won't close anymore. Now that's partially because this is the, that's partially because this is the quasi hardback one, but already it's, I mean, it's pretty thick already and it's just January. Um, tabs are going to get, these tabs are going to get bent because they stick out um, with the Passion Planner on the um, mini there, or on, the, on my iPad mini, the, the tabs are there they're not gonna get, they're not gonna stick out. So as far as portability is concerned, if you take your planner everywhere with you, um, even a small planner will get pretty chunky um, by the end of the year. This will never get bigger than this. So that that's that benefit. Um, the other benefit uh, to the digital planner is that you can use it year after year after year. So you don't, in theory, you never have to buy another Passion planner again. Um, that's the benefits to the digital. This is tactile. This, I, I prefer using this. There's a way lower barrier to entry for the passion planner, 
the physical planner, obviously. I mean, yeah, I know people get really overwhelmed by doing their mind map. I know people get super overwhelmed by doing uh, the back pages. But other than f a overwhelming feeling, which is psychological and something you can learn to get over, this is really, this is a really straightforward thing to use. It's, it's way easier uh, for me to navigate. I can navigate this planner faster than I can navigate this planner because I have because I have to do that switch to turn it into the mode to switch through it or I have to leaf through it it's no this this I find a lot easier to use and because it's sitting on my desk I'm more likely to use this every single day I've found that with the digital planner I tend to just go Oh, well, oh, I got distracted by a news app. I got distracted by a notification. It, it, this, I can set aside two hours of my day and just have two hours of planner time or an hour or 45 minutes or however much. So if you like tactile, go with this. If you like simplicity, go with this. If you live your life already digitally, if you're already using your iPad for pretty much everything you do on a daily basis, Oh, if you just love technology or if you just really need portability and something that's never going to get heavier. And if you don't want to spend $35 every year, because once you buy this, you can pretty much have it forever. Then I would go with this. The uh, caveat to you can pretty much have it forever um, or, you know, simplicity's sake is that there are three things they say are certain in life, death, taxes and data loss you could end up using losing your planner. If you do a lot of memory keeping, here's the thing about technology. This is the thing I tell my photography customers when they ask for just digital digitals. They don't want any prints. This is the thing I tell them. Technology changes rapidly. It has changed so much since I was a child, back in the 80s. Um, we used to have giant five and a quarter discs. Then we had three and a half floppy discs that, you know, that icon for save on all your programs. That was an actual physical thing. Uh, then we switched to CDs, CD-ROMs. Then uh, for a while there was an iOmega drive. You might not even heard of that. You might have no idea what I'm talking about. It's a big thick thing. It was, oh. And then there were um, physical external hard drives, which you can still get, but they were huge. They've gotten smaller. And now there's USB drives. But here's the thing also, um, I just got a new um, iPhone 12 and it no longer uses USB, it uses um, USB-C to plug into the laptops. A lot of laptops don't even come with USB ports anymore. So like people who have USB drives for their photographs, you're gonna have to get an adapter. And eventually, much like the external, hard, um, external floppy disk readers and the external iOmega drives and the external CD-ROM drives, they stopped making those. So there are people who have disks of data that are useless. People who have disks of CDs who are useless. There are people who have drawers of USBs that are becoming rapidly useless. Plus, most technology only has a shelf life of 10 years before it starts degrading and you start being able to save less on it. Um, and with the iPads I, or iPods and um, iPhones and iPads, I've found that while they're really good short term, they just kind of degrade over time. That's why I do the, I don't know what it's actually called. I call it the iPhone for life program with Apple, where I just upgrade every year my phone because then I don't have to ever worry about the technology becoming obsolete. But in doing that, when you upgrade, you lose data. Um, I recently upgraded my laptop to the Mac Big Sur and some of my programs stopped working. I wasn't able to use some of my data anymore. Um, I had to re I had to downgrade back to, I think it's C High Sierra or Mojave and form, change all my data to get it to be read by Big Sur in the new programs. It's data changes quickly and it's changing faster every year. I mean, from big floppies to little floppies was maybe five, 10 years. From the little floppies to CDs, I want to say maybe five years or so, to USBs was like three to five years. USB-C has been with like the last three years. New things are coming out all the time. There are computers that don't even have ports on them anymore. The whole point is if you're doing this for nostalgia, if this is something that you want to keep to look back in 10 years, in 20 years, um, at the end of your lifetime, you want to be able to have this big library full of all of your years so that you can flip back or you can share it with your family. You're not going to have that if you only go digital. 
Um, the author Chuck Palahniuk once told a story about uh, working in a uh, care home uh, for people with Alzheimer's at the end of their lives. And their family, a lot of the times their families didn't visit anymore. A lot of the times their possessions had been lost or stolen um, by other uh, people in the home who thought it was theirs because, you know, they have dementia, Alzheimer's, etc. So they don't know what's theirs, what's not theirs. And all that they have left, besides clothes, are boxes of photographs and, and old journals. That's it. That's all they got left. And as an orderly, he would get the out and he would flip through the, the photos with them. And there would people who didn't recognize their family anymore would look at pictures of themselves and go, oh, who's that pretty girl? And they'd be like, oh, that was you 20 years ago. And it would kind of jog their memory a little bit and they'd start talking and they'd remember things. You're not 20, 30 years from now, this, this planner, you're not gonna be able to read this planner. You're not gonna be able to see this planner when that's you someday, this is gonna be useless. This will always be here. So that's why I tell my photo clients, get albums, get prints. And that's why I'm saying, I personally will not be using this for anything other than day job work, which is stuff that is confidential anyway, that has to be done via VPN. And so therefore, if I lose all that data, it gets wiped once it's gone, it's gone and it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use it beyond my initial assignment for work. For anything, if you're doing memory keeping, any journaling, anything that you want to preserve forever, get the paper planner. All right. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or leave a comment. Tell me how you feel, what are you using, your paper or your digital planner. And of course, if you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button. We go live every Wednesday at 7 a.m., but we also drop videos during the week. So please make sure to subscribe so you get a notification of the videos that are dropped outside of the schedule. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week and enjoy this next video coming up.